Welcome, everybody, to Funeral Nation, episode 194. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the funeral commander, Harbison. Um, and Jeff, it's, well, it's easy to say that it's good to have you back on this episode. Well, thank you. It's been a trying week. And Ryan, I just want to give you kudos for uh, sharing uh, information about Hunter last week and his death. And uh, I just want to take some time today to share the power of and relationships and respect in our funeral profession because uh, our family got every bit of that last week. Yeah. And I'm going to start with uh, obviously with C and J. Uh, they, I was my own client. You know, uh, we got the assignment turned around, and interestingly, I had the uh, the money in my bank account at the arrangement room. Wow. And I can tell you that made such a difference just from a relief standpoint that there was nothing that we wouldn't do and we had the funds and able to do it. So um, I not only believe in CNJ, I not only work for CNJ, I'm a recipient of their work and uh, I'm grateful for that. So uh, just to kind of catch you up, Hunter passed last Friday, uh, which was May 15th. And uh, the sequence of events was incredible. Mm -hmm. So my wife, Candy, and I were, we flew from Phoenix to Charlotte, and from Charlotte to Norfolk, we were getting on the plane. Who was sitting on the plane but Jimmy Altmyer of Altmyer Funeral Homes? And uh, he asked me what, how I was doing, and of course, I shared with him what was going on. He said, Jeff, whatever resources we have, they're yours. And uh, interestingly enough, the Altmyer Funeral Homes purchased the Family Choice Funeral Home brand. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, what I created at the funeral home with some other folks was up under their umbrella. And uh, when Hunter passed, um, I didn't want him to go uh, down to the morgue. And so uh, Mike Strickland, who's the manager there for Family Choice and was with Family Choice when I was there, um, he came and got my son. And I was afforded the ability to help transfer my son from his hospital bed onto the gurney and uh, escort him all the way to uh, Altmar Funeral Home over in Virginia Beach. Another outpouring of love that I felt was uh, Steve Zittle, who was not only my partner, but worked uh, with me in lots of projects, capacities over the years. Steve Zittle drove six hours uh, to embalm Hunter. And um, I just felt through this whole process that uh, people loved on us in this industry. Yeah. Um, the church service was uh, something that was fantastic. Uh, because of COVID, we were having problems with the military uh, honors. And so my nephew, Shane uh, Williams and Zach Osborne was Hunter's best friend in the army. They came in their dress blues and uh, gave my son military honors. So it, everything Special. worked out there. Yeah. But I have to tell you, uh, my youngest son, Jackson, gave Hunter's eulogy, and he knocked it out of the park. I mean, just heartfelt, but I don't think there'll ever be a funeral, ever, with a quote, grubby little dick beaters off my <laughs> controller, ever. So uh, I can tell you, it was all, it was oh. all Harbison, you know, and I'm so proud of my son, Jackson, uh, and what he did by his mannerism and speech at this funeral, he opened the door for other young people to stand up and express their emotions the way that they feel like they need to express their emotions. Yeah, emotions. that's special. And, you know, I said it was irreverent, but it wasn't. It was literally what people, what people felt, and uh, that team would... Um, Mike Strickland and Steve Zittle and Jackson, I told them at the end, what you guys don't realize is what you did for the young people here saying that a funeral's necessary yeah. and it doesn't have to be what you're used to. That's right. Uh, it was just awesome. And Hunter was interred on Monday in Norfolk and it, rainy, it was raining sideways. And interestingly enough, the uh, pastor that was uh, conducting his right said, yeah, this is a perfect day for Hunter because mm -hmm. he wouldn't be able to work and he'd be home playing video games. And so uh, he did that. And I, Funeral Nation, 
funeral professionals. There's uh, just the well wishes, prayers, and thoughts. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys and mm -hmm. everyone out there. And it's a different perspective sitting as a family versus serving. And unfortunately, that doesn't change your grief, no matter right. no matter what we do. And so it, it was a blessing. Uh, I will say my son did nothing that could have caused this, uh, caused his death. There's nothing he could have done to prevent his death, and nobody did it to him. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the only piece that I can have going through this at this time. And, you know, emotions go all over, but sure. uh, I just want to tell everybody out there, thank you. And uh, heartfelt messages. I, I had messages from several folks that had lost their children. I was uh, even unaware in our profession. And so the outpouring of love, it, I, I can't, you can see it, it, it gets me very emotional. But well, anyway. this, is a, this is a big profession, but it's, it's also extremely, extremely small uh, when it needs to be. And uh, people were loving on you in a lot of different ways. Uh, the number of messages I got of what can we do? How can we help? you know, what's the best way to reach out? Um, you know, the, the messages we got through Facebook, just, just, you know, sharing the episode last week. Um, you know, this, is, this is a profession that rallies around each other when we need to. And, and, you know, th there's no other people that understand it better, um, which I think is, is, is healing in itself. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you were, you were loved on a lot last week probably even more so than what you experienced um, through phone calls and messages. But uh, there was an entire profession um, right there with you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I could feel it. I experienced it. And, you know, just the folks that I mentioned, Jimmy Altmeyer and Mike Strickland and Steve Zittle, especially that um, I felt as if my son was never in some stranger's hands. It was people mm -hmm. who loved on it, and that's mm -hmm. important. But anyway, uh, I know that we'll have to uh, saddle back up and get up on that horse and start working again. We've got some exciting things going on for us, uh, as you explained yeah. to me off air, that's coming yeah. along. Uh, we've got some new sponsors. Uh, we're going to change things up a little bit, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's exciting. I mean, uh, we've all kind of been forced into – a weird dynamic right now, but um, I think there's some things that, that we've been pushed into that are here to stay and that will continue to change. And, you know, when we first started this show 194 weeks ago, <laughs> whatever the heck it was, um, it was, it was an opportunity to really push an agenda to move a profession forward with, with, a crazy yin and yang dynamic, um, drinking and smoking, conversations that no one else was having, breaking news that no one else is talking about, companies on that that aren't in the, the, the mainstream spotlight because they don't spend a lot of money with certain organizations. Like, it, and it's evolved into now this is the platform where if you want to really know visually and, and audibly what's happening in the profession. This is where you have to go on a weekly basis. So I'm really excited about what we have coming up and, and there's new things that are taking place in this profession for the very first time at scale that we're going to be a part of, and we're going to get to help push forward and, and bring to light uh, in the profession. And, and that's exciting because when we set out to do this, whatever it was, I can't remember, it was three years ago, four years ago. It, <laughs> all I know, it was birthed over a stake at Smith & Lewinsky Steakhouse uh, at Easton Town Center, Columbus, Ohio. You were passing through. I drove up an hour to meet for a quick dinner in between your flights, and uh, we had this weird idea for this web show with you know, a strapping, good-looking old man and a, and, <laughs> and a young buck. <laughs> And uh, it's, 
it's been a wild ride, it, but we've, we've really created a, when we say funeral nation, it's a family and you know, there's, there's things coming down the pipe. Like everything's been flipped upside down and we get to be at the forefront of it and really get to break some, some new things in a profession that stayed stagnant and has been forced to ramp up, you know, tenfold in the last 12 weeks. So um, I think, I think it's a, it's good timing and uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I agree with you. Um, just the way things, the way arrangements are done, the way people are there. We were blessed in Virginia that uh, Jimmy Altmyer's brand new facility could hold a little over 300 people and the state regulation was half. And so that worked out great for us. Yeah. I can tell you we had a catered meal, you know, for everybody there. It was exactly from my perspective, what you should do for celebration. Hunter had a, a wonderful Bates Willow casket. The kids, I say kids, the young folks wrote wonderful notes on it. Um, cool. He had trinkets in the casket with them, pictures. And, um, and I was pleased because I really believe everyone who had the opportunity to be there, it changed their perspective of what a funeral is supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. And I heard that time and time again. So we, we have the opportunity you just have to step out there. Now, yep. the pastor there had a couple apoplectic moments when uh, some of the kids dropped an F-bomb, but we were laughing. I mean, you couldn't, couldn't help it, but it was, uh, it was, it was perfectly irreverent. Yeah. It'll be unforgettable for sure. I'm, I, and, and, you know, when someone can have that type of positive experience at a young age, that changes the dynamic and the perception of, of what happens As going forward. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, thank you, and uh, we'll queue back up next week. Excellent. We got to throw uh, our friends at Plotbox in here who have been uh, making some moves. Like they've been doing some webinars that are highly attended uh, and really focusing on how cemeteries can embrace this new normal or whatever the heck it's going to be. Um, they've got a platform that is revolutionizing the way that just as funeral homes have had to go virtual so cemeteries and you don't think of a cemetery being a virtual experience so plotbox is phenomenal at what they do in, in their software to make that happen yeah and you know uh thank you to shauna leona also yep. uh for your words of kindness so i'll uh, see you next week yes sir all right we'll have a uh, happy memorial day weekend and yeah. uh thank you you're welcome brother we appreciate you all right, you too, bro. Take care.